Well, good morning. It's Paul Feuerstein in my room. It's an old Beach Boys song, isn't it? In my room. I'm here with Eva Grizel, and Eva is not a dentist. She's a patient. And why would I be bringing a patient on? Well, this is Oral Cancer Awareness Month, and Eva, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. Eva is a oral cancer survivor, for lack of a better word. She's gone through the treatments. She's had diagnosis and treatment plans and things done to her that uh, you'll hear a little bit about, I guess. I don't know how graphic you want well, to Yeah, get. if you look closely, <laughs> if you look closely, you can actually see that I've had a radical neck dissection. I've so, had a plastectomy. Uh, a third of my tongue has been reconstructed from my arm, my wrist here, and so my leg. So let's, and let's, it's tell us, an tell extraordinary us. story. Yeah, so, let, so let's, let's hear your, 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 you know, this is from a patient perspective. Let's hear what's going on. What happened? How did it all occur? What went wrong? Um, tell us. Well, basically, I had a sore on my tongue that didn't go away. I never smoked. I rarely drank. I had a biopsy that was misread by a general pathologist who read moderate dysplasia as hyperkeratosis and led everybody down the wrong path. So two years went by, and I've been treated for trauma. And then finally, I basically go into New York City to get another answer because I, I couldn't live with this ulcer on my tongue. It was growing bigger and bigger. And you know, the interesting thing is the doctors should have said, she's young, she's never smoked, why isn't this going away? But instead, they said, she's young, she's never smoked, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, we, we tend to say, oh yeah, it must be an irritation, you must have a sharp tooth or something like that. Well, I had my teeth shaved down. I had, I was wearing a night guard at the time, doing everything to prevent the trauma, and it didn't go away. So, so sort of take us through the, uh, the you know, I mean, let, I mean, we're talking to the dental profession here, so we can be, uh, you know, we can talk, talk, talk dentist here. Yeah, well, unfortunately <laughs> for me, I was diagnosed at stage four because Phew. it had, it, it had gone to three of forty lymph nodes in my neck. I had a, as I said, a radical neck dissection and a glossectomy. It's, it's extraordinary that I'm articulate and that I swallow normally. I've had terrible xerostomia after a maximum dose of radiation. But interestingly enough, I have had three series of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The first time was for a split lip after radiation that just wouldn't heal. The second two times were for extractions and then implants. And that's right. I have had three implants in my maximally radiated lower jaw. Wow. And so, so what, what sort of precautions do the dentist have to take in terms of diagnosis and figuring out what's going to happen with the bone regeneration, et cetera? Well, How does that... hyperbaric oxygen is just something to consider for anybody that needs invasive dental treatment and has had a maximum dose of radiation. I was lucky to have these three series over the years, over a period of about eight years. Wow. And it has, I think, improved my saliva production. Well, wow, that's something else. So I, I've seen you lecturing. I've seen you at dental meetings, at medical meetings, at social meetings, at people. I, you have a story to tell. It's, it's a lot about prevention, isn't it? It's all about prevention. I can't let what happened to me to happen to others. I was an educated woman who was illiterate about this disease. And when I go to my gynecologist, I'm educated about women's cancers. And when I go to my dermatologist, I'm educated about skin cancers. But I am hard pressed to find dental practices that are, are thoroughly educating people, their patients about oral cancers. Why is that, Paul? Well, what we're told is that when the patient comes in, we do a, a, a hard tissue exam and a quote, soft tissue exam. And Unfortunately, and this is, is we're under time. We're looking at our cloud. I got to finish this patient by twelve thirty or whatever it is. So we allow uh, stick your tongue out. Uh, 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 yeah, all right, it looks okay. Everything's fine. And and sometimes you'll say, "Is anything bothering you?" So, yeah, I have a little cut over here. But, uh, all right, we'll keep an eye on it. And unfortunately, that, that's the majority. Now, and that, now uh, most of this hopefully do follow a series of of, of screening steps, which I, I would like you to run through yourself. 
take the tongue, move it this way, move it this way, etc. Right. Cetera. I mean, basically, uh, I've come up with you know, come up with your you, you have I've, a sort of I've come up with something that I call the six step screening, and it was yeah. mostly for the general public to educate people about what they should be getting when they go to the dentist. We shouldn't have to ask for a screening. Dental professionals should be educating us about the value of services they're providing. So the first step is to yank that tongue out with the gauze and to flip it, this, to feel the floor of the mouth, the roof of the mouth, the, leaps and, the lips and the cheeks, to palpate the neck for those HPV associated or pharyngeal cancers, and to ask your patient to go, ah, and to look for asymmetry at the back of the throat. Those are the six steps. And what are we looking for? Well, first of all, for oral cavity cancer, which is very different from oral pharynx cancer, oral cavity cancer, you're looking for any persistent sores, any one-sided pain. Uh, for more of the HPV-associated ones, it's difficulty swallowing. It's an unexplainable, persistent hoarseness. And, uh, you know, just to understand... These should be parts of the medical questions now. So can people do a home? I mean, are we to tell the patients also to do their own like sort of home screening? I mean, this is what we can do in the office. But we do self-breast sort of exams. We do yeah. self-other exams. And we should be in our mouth at least two days, a, two times a day brushing our teeth. So take a peek, look in there, see what's normal for you. So that when something abnormal develops, you're noticing it. But if you never look, You'll never see it. And early stage oral cancer is often asymptomatic. You don't feel it. So somebody's got to be looking. Why not yourself? So, so when you say to a patient, look for things, I mean, we, and we've had a lot of false alarms, which is fine with me. People say, oh, I have a bump down here. I never noticed this bump before. And they come in and it turns out it's a Taurus that they've had for their whole life. <laughs> So, so how can you, how can we educate people more? Is, are, is there a, a website we can go to? Is there a... Yeah, well, uh, I've got the, there's the six step screening poster, which not only educates patients about the steps in an oral cancer exam, but also the signs and symptoms of the disease. The bottom line is to catch it early. When oral cancer is caught early, it's very survivable. And so we'll, po we'll post, uh, you, luckily you previously just sent us a little, some little uh, 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 sort of cutouts that we can put up. And yes, post them there's up a online. poster, there's a recare uh, next appointment card, and there's also a self-exam card. So <laughs> the, fun of, the fun of life. <laughs> fun yeah. of shit, yeah. All kinds Another of thing to look at, right? <laughs> Something wow. else to add to the list. So, so how are you feeling now? I mean, it, it, what's, what is your... As a, you know, having gone through all this and you, you said you have some xerostomia and, and you, you know, you were concerned about articulation. Um, first of all, I mean, these, how many different surgeries have you had to have in the mouth and the tongue and all this sort of thing? I'm just I was very myself. lucky to only have one major surgery. And during that surgery, I had a head and neck pathologist working near the doctor. Every slice removed from my tongue was examined for clear margins before they took another slice. So they knew they had clear margins before they closed me up. Wow. So I did not require a second surgery. A lot of people, you know, they find out after surgery, they didn't have clean margins and then they have to go back in. And do you, so, still, do you still have to go through any sort of uh, Post testing to see if there's any residual going back or I'm a 22 like year survivor now. It's a long yeah. time. <laughs> I do. I have had six negative biopsies right over the graft, so I do keep an eye out on, for changes. Uh, when a dentist sees my tongue, they're usually like, "Oh, well, you better get that checked." <laughs> they're pretty <laughs> uncomfortable, <laughs> but I know it's normal for me. Yeah, my so tongue was actually. Uh, become crenated and taken on the shape of my teeth so it's because it's not real tongue it's not native tongue it's you know, a graft so it's <laughs> wow this is this is this is just uh you know this is sort of enlightening we, we've been bombarded with with um testing patients for covid and taking their temperatures but we can't forget the basics this has been around for a lot longer than COVID was. I mean, looking at, at oral cancer screening. So what's, what's your message to everybody before we, before we log off here? My message to all the dental professionals listening is to recognize that education is the best 
practice of care you could provide a patient. Educate them about oral cancer. If you're doing the screenings, which I hope you are, tell them what you're doing and what you're looking for. So that if a patient develops a symptom within the six months or a year that they come back to see you, they develop a symptom, they know to call and get in to be evaluated. So you, I know you have a, uh, so a, re, a resource website. So is it just your name on the website? Getscreening.org is the resource for actually the general public and dental professionals. And if you're interested in having me speak yeah. about my story, you would go to evagrazel.com. I appreciate kind of, the I, opportunity <laughs> to raise awareness and save lives. Well, that, that's great. I, I have to say it's a pleasure. It's not a pleasure hearing the story, but it's a pleasure speaking to you and, and seeing it, that you're so bubbly about this whole thing and, and dynamic. And, and I've seen you speaking. And uh, this is, this, people don't really understand how you can get up on stage and what you're out there and people are staring at you and cheering and it's, it's quite something to see. So Yeah, uh, and it's such a <laughs> difficult subject. <laughs> But actually, yeah. there's a, you know, that's a skill. It's a skill to find blessings in adversity. It's human nature to just complain, and, and it's a skill to see your blessings, no matter what you're going through. Super. Either. Well, thanks for spending some time with us. I hope a lot of people take heed of what you've said. We'll post all the information on the site here. And thanks, and stay safe from everything else Thank that's you. happening out there.